So hi, hello again. If you remember, we have a very simple animation with these balls. So it is two seconds one, two seconds another, and two seconds another. I'm going to do an exercise with uh, the typical bouncing ball. And you might be aware that the bouncing ball is a paradigm of the uh, principles of animation. In this example, this artist is uh, explaining the process of animating a bouncing ball using traditional uh, animation techniques in 2D. As you can imagine, this implies a lot of work. Animating the, uh, the ball implies minimum of uh, 30, 45 frames. Think depending on if you work on 12 frames per second or you want uh, 24 frames per second. Here, the artist is explaining us how to do the arcs. And as you can imagine, the ball is, is losing uh, speed uh, as an effect of the Earth's gravity. This is pure physics. And there is uh, more and more arcs, but uh, those are smaller. Fortunately, we are not going to draw each individual frame. This is going to be a much uh, faster, um, uh, sim more simple process. But uh, um, let's focus on one of the balls. I'm going to use this uh, tennis ball. So remember, I can just hide this and I can also hide them from the uh, timeline very easily. And right now the animation is too seconds but i'm not worried about that because i can always um, uh, stretch the animation or uh, modify uh, all the keyframes as as you will see is a very easy uh, technique so basically uh, here the keyframes we are going to modify are going to be position uh, maybe scale and rotation okay so uh, the only thing you have to do to create a keyframe is to click on the stopwatch. And we are going to start with a uh, position. And remember, we uh, might be creating two, three keyframes, no more, because we want to keep it as simple as we can. So if you create these two, then the, the first one uh, can be, for example, here, and the third one can be uh, something like that. Then maybe after one second, it would do a second. Try to think about uh, what we have tormented before in relation to the keyframes, how a ball uh, moves. Okay. So what we want is a very uh, fast movement and then later some kind of deceleration. Okay. That gets the top when uh, the absence of the gravity and the top of, uh, you know, of the arc and then later some uh, speed gain in there. Okay. If you go to keyframe assistance, you can change the relationship between these two keyframes I'm selecting. So selecting both, we are going to apply easy, easy out. By doing that, we can uh, just get a look to the uh, to the graph editor, and we can see that the kind of animation we're doing is implying a fast, 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 fast speed. Okay, so it gets the maximum just here or, or here when uh, it is touching the floor. Okay, so that's that's positive. That's what we wanted to do, and then later. Uh, it uh, gains a speed again here okay so what we can do and it might be better is to make this smoother so it is not that jump and slide but more kind of an easy something like that but this one needs to go yes. Yeah, remember we are manipulating the time so this one faster and this one because it's smaller is slower so i want that to be relatively slower less time 
and therefore the cure seems to be more kind of. Okay, so even if uh, you are satisfied with this, this is not the end of the work. Or obviously, what we need is now to do the touch. To do the touch, probably you need to do the the curve here, uh, the spatial curve a little more uh, more natural. So you need to click this and try to make this a little more uh, okay. Something like that. So. Okay. Then if you feel that between this and this is still okay, I feel that probably you need less time here, so I'm going to adjust this one. Okay, this might be better. I think now it works a little better. And as you see, finally, the the animation has been practically the half of what I projected. So that really means that we we need to train our minds to calculate more or less the time we are going to spend in each object, in each uh, transition. We cannot always be, as I'm doing here, playing with that. You, know, you try to uh, practice these kind of things. So now the touching, how you do the touching? Well, here you animate the scale and you unlink this uh, property. So that way you can just do the stretch in one of the dimensions. Okay. Then later you adjust the position here. Yes. If not, you're going to create another keyframe and I don't want to do more keyframes. I want to keep it as simple as possible. So then you adjust the position to touch the the flow, or if you want, you can create a flow here, obviously, it depends on the context of your animation. What I would recommend is to do it, uh, this deformation here, and then moving, uh, so you can see actually the degree of deformation you are applying. So if you apply this one, uh, if you notice, this the deformation is not really that much related to physics as it is with the principles of animation because animation is about narration, it's about telling a story, it's not about reflecting reality. If you record a bouncing ball in video and then you rotoscopy that, which is the technical term for tracing the image frame by frame, if you copy the animation from a real object to this animated object, you probably won't have that effect of deformation, because that deformation is conducted by another principle of animation, which is the exaggeration. So this is just an example, very, very basic, about why animation is not reflecting reality, animation is interpreting reality. If you want to apply an effect of a more video effect like motion blue, it's cool. You just have to select the corresponding uh, modifier here in the column, uh, motion blue. You select that one and then remember you have to activate that one as well for all the layers who have that condition. So that way you would see there is some kind of nice effect of video that would depend on the frame rate, would depend on the um, uh, interpolation of uh, the uh, the video, some other technical issues they are obviously of the colors you are using. Notice as well that uh, this is uh, an effect of uh, my interpretation of what is going to be the uh, tennis ball. Uh, if you work with another ball, you might want to. Uh, apply a different uh, elasticity or a different um, uh, kind of curve uh, on the arcs, okay? So it would be a different uh, movement uh, depending on the ball you choose. You can also now animate uh, as well the rotation maybe, although honestly, and because this is a, a, 
a very particular object, you might not notice at all that effect, so it might not be that uh, useful, but okay, if you want to do, for example, that, it would be just a question of applying uh, here uh, the keyframe of rotation, and then here, for example, as well, when we stop watching that, whatever we can do, uh, for example, to do uh, three complete, uh, and we see how that works. Maybe it's too exaggerated, maybe one and a half, one four, something like that might work better. So I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to apply this one, and I'm going to apply ECEs as well in this case. So, okay, that would be uh, my bouncing ball. So maybe bouncing ball is not the right term. Maybe we can think about any other thing like jumping ball or whatever. Anyway, uh, this is the result of animation, uh, of this animation exercise. I would suggest now to explore other possibilities with uh, the other balls. 